Okay, so is my slides visible? Yes, please. Yeah. Vishan, is it visible to everybody? Yes, please. It's visible. Please go ahead. Yeah, thank you. Okay, no, I am not able to see my slides uh, previewing. So anyway, so okay, so thank you, Prashant, for uh, providing this chance and congratulations for conducting this workshop. So I have been asked by Prashant to give a talk on bioinformatics and databases. What are the databases available in bioinformatics and how to access those databases? A very fundamental talk. So let's begin. Oh, as you know, I think bioinformatics is basically the, you know, the amalgamation of three different disciplines, informatics, mathematics, statistical and biological information. So you have biological data, biological information as input. Use, uh, you put your information in computers, computer science, use the algorithms, you use develop mathematics, use maths and stats and develop some algorithms and perform the analysis. So it's basically a multidisciplinary subject where we have the biological information in chromosomes and proteins. We, we collect this information, we put it to computers, and then computers perform algorithms. So from this raw information, like sequence of the DNA, sequence of the RNA, sequence of the protein or the structure of the protein, we try to interpret the results in some meaningful way. Like we 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 basically it's IT mediated interpretations of biological information. So biological information is there, but now we know that when example it is we interpret the information in such a way so that like we can easily uh, understand the we can easily extract out the knowledge. We can plot things, these all circles, you know show some different kinds of information. The color coding, the circle, the inner circle, everything is different. So different kinds of information can be interpreted from the raw data. So this is what the bioinformatics is all about. In bioinformatics, basically, we use computers, the algorithms, and we use the biological data to analyze. We can define the application of information technology, to biology using mathematical and statistical principles. We use mathematics, we use statistics, and come to some conclusion, some, some interpretation, some prediction. Okay, so bioinformatics is basically about the approximate prediction. We try to predict. So it provides computational solutions to the biological problems. So computational, computational solutions to biological problems, it explores the hidden biological information and interpret it some meaningful way using IT. So like, for example, what are these problems? For example, given a, a sequence of a DNA, predict the regions. So what are the regions, whether genes are there or not? What are the motifs are there? Where are the UTR sites? Where are promoters? Where are, you know, different sites are there in a DNA sequence? So, so basically, given a sequence, we are analyzing different parts of the sequence and we are predicting, for example, in case of genes, we are predicting, okay, these regions could be genes. So it's all about predictions. Similarly, to explore the hidden biological information, for example, in case of proteins, we, you know, the crystallographic structures is nothing but the points, but we uh, convert these points into, you know, the atomic coordinates into a well-defined structure. So we'll see later how it is happening. In bioinformatics, there are different synonyms exist for bioinformatics, computational biology, computational molecular biology, biomolecular informatics, computational genomics, bio, different you know, person. It, 
it depends upon the person who is using it so it's everything all about using computers and analyzing the biological data so it is there are different perspective by informatics for example those who are biologists the medical uh, professional doctors uh, biochemicals uh, you know biochemist means pure biologist you know they for them it is a tool but it's a huge discipline where like we the the informaticians by informaticians mathematicians statisticians they develop and they generate some meaningful and understandable results out of the raw data so it's you know it is uh, both uh, the things are different where one is the user and another is the developer so in bioinformatics there are certain you know default tasks that we perform like for example developing softwares and databases and then completing a newly sequenced dna protein sequence against the databases why in order to assign a function if something is already known we compare and if our comparison is very good if our unknown sequence our query sequence matches with the existing sequences very well then we can say these since both they share a good amount of structural or sequence similarity we can say the unknown sequence may perform may perform the similar function okay so then like searching for the existing patterns as i said like in case of a protein or in case of a genome there are certain regions the crucial uh, you know there are local regions so we for example genes are local regions of the entire genome so we look for the patterns small like motifs domain so we look for small patterns small motifs so this is again important task to search given a query query sequence can be a biological it can be a dna sequence can be a protein sequence then phylogenetic analysis based upon the biological sequences so we try to uh, you know establish an evolutionary relationship based upon this uh, dna and protein sequences protein sequences are quite good as compared to the biological sequences now like uh, 16s rrna is uh, commonly used to establish this relationship then like deciphering the uh, pathway in biological network to the systems biology like for example in bioinformatics this is again a very important task where you given uh, you know the the you know, list of genes you try to identify whether all these genes are working together in some specific pathway since they when you when you sequence something at um, when that uh, we know that our, 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 our like we have our tissue specific gene expression so a uh, specific tissue specific number of rna will be very high so we can sequence all rna and then we convert them into dna see what what these rna and we make a list of all those things once we come come to know that okay, these are the sequences present in a specific tissue okay we make a list and perform analysis okay, whether a specific pathway is running what kind of pathway so this is all about the network biology systems biology prashant is uh, the expert of this then again important task is predicting the three dimensional structure from the one dimensional sequence data so this is how the bioinformatics these are the common thing so like if you look at the fundamental problem in bioinformatics it is the multiple sequence alignment problem is there and we use this multiple sequence alignment to you know to identify regions which are conserved okay so we use this for pattern pattern identifications or motif analysis and then after performing multiple sequence alignment we can create a tree so this is a phylogenetic tree where we try to uh, we try to <clears throat> look at the course of evolution so how you know sequences are evolved so based upon so like uh, in you know the current scenario the polyphasic taxonomy we use so we use 16s rrna or bacteria and also the common way so we can establish and another problem is like genome uh, mapping i don't know so genome mapping is there pathway analysis there this is a biological network okay and then the two dimensional structure three dimensional structure the design so for example like this is genome mapping where you need to map the entire genomes we have a genome uh, we have this the, the the chromosomes and we identified all those spots called loci so these we know uh, we have established that this part is for uh, you know this part is responsible for this all of this you know so mapping is again important part, 
pardon by informatics, where we try to decipher the entire chromosome for all sort of loci points, where we know that these points are responsible for some kind of expressions, okay? These are called biological markers. We can use these points as biological markers. So this is how we uh, do in bioinformatics. So these are fundamental problems in bioinformatics, multiple sequence alignment, phylogenetics, the, the genome mapping, pathway analysis, network biological networks analysis, 2D, 3D structure prediction, and the drug designing again aspect. So, so if you look at the spectrum, uh, you know, in a, in a more way, so these are certain, you know, areas, bioinformatics areas, like where alignment is there, database searching is again area, molecular visualization, you visualize the DNA, you visualize the protein, for example, right now, like, Renuvo was expecting the, uh, the MGL tools for visualization. Similarly, there are many tools. The VMD is there very good for some micromolecular simulations, like docking. So she was explaining the molecular docking using autodoc tools. This is open source tool. Similarly, there are many, many softwares which are open source, means they are open source means uh, for the community. You can download, you can use, but with the existing license, you can distribute, no problem. Then computer drug designing where like here, like this docking is important part. So if you have two compounds, you can dock, you can see whether they are reacting or not based upon the interactions. If one molecule is interacting with the other or not. So we use all biochemical and biophysical, uh, you know, all formulas and try to look at the interactions, hydrogen bonding interactions and different kinds of interactions. So, so in, so docking is a process whereby we link, we, we have two molecules. One is ligand, and that means you can say ligand and a receptor. So how how best a ligand can bind with the receptors can be done with the molecular docking. Then, like for example, structural prediction is aspect where like you uh, given a one-dimensional sequence data, like a sequence of ATGC of maybe a nucleotide sequence. A protein sequence, you convert nucleotide into a protein sequence, and then given a protein sequence, can you, can you determine its structure? So this is a structure prediction. So two-dimensional, three-dimensional structure prediction problem. Is a, so lots of, uh, you know, every year, like every two years, a CASP is a, a program, a competition for predicting this structure. So there, so in the world, like, means all scientists are working for, for, for this problem, structure predictions where, so that CAS organizers, they give a sequence, a protein sequence, and they resolve the structure through experimental, the crystallography, and then they ask scientists to predict the, the structure, and then they compare whose structure is more close to the real one. There. So then multiple simulation dynamics is again a uh, good uh, area where like we try to simulate the membranes and how, uh, you know, molecules move inside our body. Means membrane, how molecule passes through a membrane, how protein opens up. Because in membranes, proteins are the way by which molecules can move inside and outside the cells. So how it behaves. So simulations are there. Then an uh, area is gene expression and microarray, uh, like We'll discuss about gene expression means as i said tissue specific gene expression means every means if you took at the tissue of the eyes of the heart the pancreas you take any part tissue the 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 genes of that particular for example if you take a pancreatic tissue then you will definitely because we know pancreas is responsible for the insulin production so definitely if you take a tissue of pancreas you will see that our rna genes means the, the genes of insulin, that means the mRNA produced would be very high. So you, you, can do, you can select those mRNA, you can extract out those mRNA, convert into cDNA, and then you can perform bioinformatics analysis. Okay. So microarray is nothing but imaging technique where you take a picture of all expressions. And then you can analyze those, uh, the oligoarrays. And then another important point is the beta metabolomic systems biology. Well, like, you know, the systems biology is basically the regulatory network. You identify, you do NGS, and after NGS, you try to look for all those spots, the genes, or you make a list of the genes, which expression is quite high, then you can see and establish a relationship. 
Okay, so these are the common genes. Uh, they are expressing at a specific type. So then, then you can establish a relationship. Okay, so if, uh, if these number of genes are activated at a specific point of a time, then these are the pathways which are available. So you can establish a relationship between, you know, the various pathways. So this is called network modeling. And another is important is the genomics, that is NGS data analysis, genomics and proteomics. So it's, uh, you know that for everything like right now, world is, you know, looking at the NGS, those persons who can perform the NGS data analysis everywhere. Like for example, when in fact in our COVID cases, like what we're doing is NGS data analysis, where we try to sequence the entire, the, uh, the entire genome, and then we look for the changes, the variable regions, variant calling. So we look for the changes, where are the changes in the genomes, how it is affecting, how system behaves. So it is basically, we take the entire genome at a time, we try to study the entire genome. That is, that's why we call it genomics. So whole genome approach is being used right uh, nowadays. And then, we, we, so I think that part will be covered by the Prashant. So this is about the spectrum about, we have a lot of uh, these applications of bioinformatics, personalized medicines is there, preventive medicines, gene therapy, drug development, antibiotics, so molecular based evolution studies, crop improvement, drought resistance, improvement nutritional quality, metabolism. So lots of applications are there, like bioinformatics, where like bioinformatics play a key role for, for you know, for, <clears throat> You can apply bioinformatics for different kinds of products. Okay, so today uh, I have to discuss about the databases, what are the databases and how we store these databases inside the computers, What, are, how many databases are there. So let's discuss about this databases. So we know that, so what is, before discussing about databases, let's understand what is biological data information. So we know that like this is the, uh, information exchange our cell this is a picture of a cell where we know that this central dogma of molecular biology that is the the transcription and the translation so dna expresses to make and whenever dna expresses it makes rna and this rna from nucleus from nucleus go into the cytoplasm and attaches with the ribosomes and there it translates and produces the protein molecules. So from RNA to protein. So this is how st uh, our system, a factory works. And for all, like we need energy, we take food, generate energy and pro process this. So this is molecular exchange. And if you look at the flow of information, we have like, we know that our genetic structure, we know that all information uh, is available in the form of the genome and that genome can be you know at uh, you know when uh, in dividing cells we can see these chromosomes very clearly in case of humans like uh, during mito uh, during mitosis you can see this at uh, you know metaphase these chromosomes are very clear so then they, we know that these chromosomes they we have long parts small parts this is basically the dna sequence double standard dna if we further explore it, we can see that there are four bases in the DNA, where like C binds with the G, A binds with the two, which is triple bond, which is double bond. So, and then can be, you know, this DNA can be converted into RNA, and then this RNA makes the protein. So this proteins, the, the result of translation, where after once it makes a linear chain, it undergoes a post-translation modifications, that means specific changes in this linear chain, those changes brings about this specific molecule, the structurally, structurally conserved protein molecules. Okay. And why I'm saying structurally conserved? Because the shape, the structure of the protein decides the function. That is why from linear, after post-translation modification, it makes the three dimensional structure. This is what the problem called protein folding problem, where the protein structure prediction we call. So we are still like this, uh, you know, this computation is on. We are not having a single way by which we can resolve the structure. We can say, okay, this is 100% accurate structure. So we are using different uh, machine learning approaches and we are near to 
we have, we have a like it, de it depends upon the sequence and like many times like we could attain we could attain around 90 percent 92 percent near to the real but still uh, we are we still like we yet we haven't developed any method by which we can attain a 99.9 or 99 something okay so still like this competition is over this problem the protein folding problem is on so scientists throughout the world working on this problem then like once you have this protein structure you want to know what this kind of what this enzyme is working so it plays some role in this pathway and this is how our system works how information flows from the genome to the reaction so why we are living because we are running lots of biological biochemical reaction inside us and this this expression this explicit part of the genome called protein will play some role and regulate the activity maybe a structure maybe a regulatory role maybe like for example transcription factor maybe kind of a structural factor so this this expressed part would be you know like at this level like we know that now uh, enzymes called ribozymes they these rna uh, also act as a structural and then they are also able to perform lots of activity and they are basically they are performing the regulatory role besides the structure like uh, the uh, the okay so uh, the ribosomes are basically the uh, the structural and the so rna as a structural role they make the ribosomes besides that uh, all are the performing they are basically regulating the activity of transcriptions so so the mirna sa and so the repetitive so this is how we have learned the flow of information from the genome to a sequence by chemical Okay, so how to generate information? So we like we have the chromosomes, we have nucleus chromosomes. We know that this is binds. So we have sequencers. Yes, I have shown you a very you know basic basic sequencer just to just to make you aware how to get a to get a nucleotide sequence done. So this is the old method of sequencer. You and this is how the computer reads. You extract out the DNA, put it into wells, ATGC, different colors. right now like we are using different approaches whole genome sequencing where like for every base we use some signal for example uh, uh, you know the, the thermal signals and different kinds of signals have been used for 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 different different kinds of bases so like in a stop taking a single base you can take a, a group of five bases for for more accuracy so so this is how you have the dna and then you 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 call the bases call base calling and then and then read the base and then from finally you generate a sequence of a dna okay so once you have a sequence of a dna you can make a rna from it and also you can make a protein sequence called translated sequence you can say a hypothetical protein hypothetical sequence for example so what we have understood what we have understood from genome to the pathway we have different kinds of information available dna sequences secondary structure tertiary structures the motifs are there so okay three dimensional structures are there and these are the imaging uh, like proteomics two dimensional gene vector forces there are microarrays there and finally the pathway is there. so we have lots of biological information available so we uh, create Uh, we store this biological information in databases okay so that we are going to talk about the databases so <clears throat> uh, these are the information available with the bioinformatics so what are the databases now we need to store this information inside computers okay so databases nothing but the softwares which we use to collect the information and store the information in some organized manner okay so um for example like we use tables to store the information so we use we store we collect the information we store the information for example the simple simplest example is the excel sheet where you can make the records you can put the record names and you can put the information okay so this is the simplest uh, uh, the excel sheet is the simplest way to store the organized information okay so similar to similar to excel so we have well defined uh, systems the softwares like for example in microsoft the basic is access It's freely available, and if you go 
a little you know higher so for example mysql is there so i use mysql mysql is very it is community developed open source free to everybody everybody can use the software to store the information because why we are we using this uh, softwares like so that we can handle multiple queries at a time for example just imagine the the ncbi server the the putting the rcsb the pdb server when an ncbi server at every second millions of queries are coming on to and they are striking on to the servers so this server should be capable of handling all the queries so hpc machines are high performance cluster computing i mean you know they have what they have done is they have used multiple machines and they created a cluster of machines and all these cluster of machines they all are integrated to open systems which can take queries and and then called we call the grid engine and all that grid engine takes up the queries and then distribute the query into different kinds of servers so that and that is how so now we have the san system nas system so object oriented databases you know means the way we the the store and organize the information is really very advanced nowadays but what is the what is what is the task of any database get data organize and store the data and then give it back to the user so so we store the information we make tables and we make tables and query system and then we use that system and give it back to the user if any query comes we use that system and give the data back to the users so there are two ways we can store the information another one is there object but quite advanced one but basic of two ways are there flat file system and relational system in flat file system it is like your register your class notebook or your you know uh, your class register where you have the like for example one page devoted for one student okay you can keep a record of a one student so you can devote one page for one student similarly so flat file is nothing but composed of flat pages for specific objects so and relational is nothing but it is not like single pages for one per, uh, student so it is basically it divides the con, uh, entire information in small small tables okay and then join all the tables because because in flat file all the time whenever you make a query the system will read all the fields i means every page needs to be open at every query okay so that is not feasible that is why relational system are there only they divide for example name and uh, for example mobile number it is one field one small table which contain id a name and mobile number and rest of the information may be distributed in further tables okay so if a query comes so it is quite fast and it can you know you can divide the information stored in form tables so uh, this is the example for example the flat file record is this the 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 gen bank record this is called flat file record you can see that at left side these are the called record names and all record names contains the information here so these are the record names and record information similarly okay. so this is how you can make the flat file and this is the relational database system where you can put all information in some this so all like um, general uh, databases uh, basically they they and they put they keep the information in table forms but and finally they they give a re, your give a re, your demanded results in flat file format so there are different challenges of databases storage modeling efficiency interpretations all are important storage means how to store the information because if you allow people around the world to put information inside the server millions of query will keep on coming and strike the server so how that server is going to store the information so it should be dynamic it it, it should be scalable uh, auto scalable auto you know auto uh, uh, it must have some auto expansion system so whenever a huge amount of information comes it will expand automatically so modeling is important so relational hierarchical semi structural with kind of memory efficiency update query analysis so means how fast your query can run on the system interpretations how you interpret your results how you give uh, you know generate reports so 
all points you know uh, once you once your information is getting large for example nuclear databases protein sequence so the systems get more and more complex with the with the increase in the size of information so this is how so in bioinformatics we have classified the databases in two kinds the primary databases and the secondary databases primary means we call primary like for example genbank is a primary database it's from a scientist desk to a computer right a raw information so these databases are primary source of information can be considered as reservoir of sequence information for example scientist is working and uh, on some bacteria he, and he, once the bacteria get sequenced once he, he get all bacteria in the right sequence and deposit that sequence into the ncbi server using some uh, interfaces like the sequin as their webin is there so and then you can deposit your information to the server so this is how a, a scientist desk a researcher directly to a computer this is called the primary database for example embed dbj nc by all those are example of primary database what are secondary secondary means they derive information from the primary one this these they are referred to as the secondary databases we know that genes for example the uh, for example uh, databases like pfam block prints so secondary means they are for example genome is the entire set entire information and genes are the the parts of the genome so we can create a database of specific sequences which which represent the gene for example d uh, database of uh, est d db est okay so db est database what it contains it contains only you take any gene and Uh, and the last part, when you two hundred base pair from five prime end as well as three prime end, so two hundred to three hundred base pair from both the ends, they get you know they sequence only the ends, and key and they have created a, a database called database of ext express sequence tags. Okay. So what what this is it is it's a secondary database. It contains only small regions, but that region belongs to some express part of the genome that is a gene so whenever your query matches against this dst now you are sure that since your unknown sequence your query sequence matches with dbst and dbst contains sequences which are expressed that means your sequence is you know it is worth and it belongs to some gene some some it is definitely going to play some kind of a role okay so it is playing some role in our bag in our metabolic system so this is how you can use so that is why lots of primary and uh, lots of secondary databases are there and uh, based upon like pfam block pin so what they are doing is they are using uh, they create they are creating the family uh, from this primary databases and then you are, they are performing uh, you know the cons uh, conserved blocks of the conserved part of that a particular family so that is how they are creating so based upon mathematical algorithms different kinds of secondary databases are there we are not going to uh, in depth but let's see so okay so if we talk about nucleotide repositories so we have got uh, you know three major nucleotide repositories D uh, ncbi DDBJ and EMBL. So it's in America. DDBJ in Japan, EMBL is in Europe, and ZBI in America. So they work in collaboration since 1982. So they are working in collaboration. So and they uh, working in collaboration means now uh, you can submit uh, you know your your sequence to any of the any of the databases. All they they every 24 hours they since they are in collaboration so they what they, they update each other so whatever information if you will deposit your information ncbi your information will get updated in ddbj as well as in mbl so in embl or ddbj and yes so they are working in collaboration so you no need to submit in all the data banks you need to submit only a single uh, data bank and and this single data bank will update the other two major repositories Okay, so these are the websites. So NCBI, CMBL, DDBJ. 
if you look at the uh, april 15 2021 okay, june then you can see this is the last release 243 release and contain a huge number 8.3 billion base pair come on and from this number of sequences 22 billion sequences so this 22 million sequences and this number of bases are there now you can imagine the computer machines now you can imagine the computer machine the storage system where this number of sequences are available and this number of bases are available and you can see here let this red line indicate the whole genome sequences we know that we have started from 2000 and two onwards like where like uh, the whole genome whole genome sequencing they started uh, you know It picked up, and lots of project started in whole genome. So you can see the graph. Now this graph says the whole genome sequencing uh, is quite very popular and contains a huge amount of data as compared to the normal genome sequencing. So this is the you know the the data speed. So these are the bases these are the sequences number of sequences present in whole genome sequencing projects quite higher as compared to normal so you can you can download the entire data bases it is available you can see the growth and the expansion after two, you know after 2000 basically four you can see the steep in fact it is 2002 2001 once the human genome project was the first draft april 2001 the first human genome project draft was came out so after that like Whole genome sequencing, sequencing, and so you can see the graph, sequencing graph, the exponential graph, steep exponential graph of nucleotide and protein sequences. So, uh, in case of proteins, you can see there are three repositories similar to the nucleotide, but there is a, there exists a difference. So, in case of proteins, we have the protein sequence repositories, and we can also have the protein structure repositories because. the sequence can you know the sequences you can uh, you can directly sequence you know that we have a method we can use mass spectroscopy normal algorithm methods sequence and then. and the best way is to from dna you convert to the protein okay so you once you, you once you get your nucleotide sequence you can convert your nucleotide sequence into the amino acid sequence you can genetically code it so it's very common and databases are there called tremble This tremble contains the translated EMVL tremble. We call it tremble, but it is basically the translated EMVL. So PIR is there, Swiss Prot is there, and tremble. Now, and for protein structure, PDB and DB, MMDB. This is nuclear vector-based system, MMDB. It's quite advanced, but PDB is the most common one. Besides that, there can be cryptographic databases. Proprietary databases also exist, and they say that they are they are curated. Information they can contain more curated information, but anyway, so we have these resources available with us. So if you look at the websites, this pro website, Unipro. Now Unipro is there, a PDB. So all these PIRs, this pro, and then they combine together to make. And so PIR, PIR database is the oldest database of proteins. At least you know the that lady Margaret Dayhoff. She made that. She has created a book called. Uh, she has converted. Uh, the book atlas of protein sequence structures and created database called the pi protein information resources but now this is merged in unipro 2004 so this uh, pir is completely merged in unipro so this is basically they made a consortium in 2004 and they so this one was the last plan for last week this is swiss pro wow for protein swiss port is the most authenticated resource why because it carries only the the uh, in, uh, the sequences which carries the high level of annotation such as like description of the functions means it is a curated database swiss port is the curated so whatever information if if your sequence matches against the curated uh, swiss port database you must like you are at least uh, you are, you can assure yourself that your sequence is definitely going to Perform some kind of function, the similar function. So Swiss Prot is basically the you know we, it contains high level of annotations, basically everything, post transcription modifications, variants, every all information. And the most common, most important thing is it contains minimal level of redundancy. Redundancy means the repetition of information. 
Okay, so one X and then X, Y, X, Z, so X is there. So they remove redundancy, okay? So you won't find the redundant information. So that is why it's most uh, important. So here you can see the graph. You can see the graph of amino acid composition here. You can see legends are there, grays, they are lipidic, acidic. So this is how the amino acid composition of. Oh, so if you talk about the number of sequences there in nucleotide, you know, it was in billions of sequences, but here in Swiss protein sequences, there are only seven lakhs. You know, it's not so much sequence here, like you can see, uh, you know, carries number of sequences. After this, it carries, but right now it contains um, 175,000. Uh, no, it is 7 lakh sequences are there. But uh, you say this, since it contains tremble, it also carries the sequence of proteins which are translated from nucleotide. So that's why this number is high. But if you look at the Swiss, Swiss protein alone, you see that it is around five to, I think seven to 10 lakhs right now. It's not more than that. So if you talk about the, uh, uh, if we try to compare the, the nucleotide sequences against the protein sequences, so, you know, it is, it is not comparable. So it is in lakhs, it may be as a 1 million sequence and there it is in billion. So, it, uh, you know, you can't compare billion with the million. So if you, and you look at these, the uniprot, so EMBL, Tremble, Swissprot, so they combined, they made uniprot. So what is this? It's a consortium of all this, European UBI, Swiss Institute and Protein Information Resources. So they are working together since 2004. They made a consortium in 2002. And now, so this is basically data integration of Swissprot, Tremble, PIR. So it is uniprot KB, knowledge-based. You can see that it consists of two sections. One is the review, this is important the manually annotated, or you can say manually curated, Swiss port, okay. And then this is unreviewed, tremble. This is computationally analyzed. That means we have converted the nucleotide sequences, records, and translated uh, into the protein sequences. So that is why these are the unreviewed records that are with, you know, full annotation. So more than just imagine, just look at this figure, 95% of the protein sequences provided are derived from translation of coding sequences region, that serious region of the GenBank, 95%. Just 5% is the Swiss fruit. Whatever the information derived from Swiss fruit is only 5%. Rest 95, is, it is Tremble translated. That's why I say. So here, like you can see, you put KB in PAR, external resource, and this is basically two part tremble and then space fluid. So this is basically the integration. And you can this for proteomes, you can your unique references sequences are there. We call it sequence clusters of similarity based upon that. Unique park is there. So information is there. You can see you got KB, this fruit, this is site, you can say. Okay, let's talk about these structures, they're important. Primary structures, secondary structures are there. So uh, protein uh, structures uh, are, you know, the final way you can see that. So there are databases like protein databank is the major one. And besides MMDB is there, it is CCDs, you know, this is proprietary one, MMDB is at NCBI, which is quite advanced one. But PDB is the main source of protein structures. And then secondary databases, like for example, secondary means here, we are using the main protein data bank as our reference point, and we are, for example, a scope is secondary. We are classifying based upon the secondary structure elements. We have, we have collected the secondary structure elements from all, from all protein structures available in protein data bank, and based upon those secondary structures, for these are the secondary helices and sheets. Based upon these secondary structures, we have classified all proteins, all proteins present in protein data bank. And that's why we have created this scope. Similar ways, we call it structural classification of proteins, scope, it's CAT. It's another, DALI is again a database where like we use uh, DALI uh, for basically the structural superimposition. Right? Like we, we, when we try to compare two structures, we perform structural superimposition. We call it structural alignment, okay? So basically the, the root mean scar deviation is used uh, for the structural superimposition. 
we can we can we we can put one structures over the another and we can take a specific element uh, for example uh, uh, atoms based upon that for example c alpha is uh, most common atom commonly taken atom for structural superimposition and we take the c alpha of each amino acid c alpha of each amino acid of the proteins and then create a framework and try to map one framework over the other okay that is how we we superimpose structures and so dali performs that superimposition and scop and cat are the classification databases let's okay so this is basically the pdb sites this is the ndb sites and this is the 3 this is ncbi structures is mmd mmdb sites okay so this is you know cn3d is like a, is a software you can that you can visualize the structures so <clears throat> if we talk about the structures till date till like today 15th june contained around 178000 747 now you can compare now you can see a comparative of the structures the sequence and the protein sequence and the nucleotide sequences it is this 178000 in lakh even 1 lakh and if you compare with this is suppose swiss protein it is around 7 to 10 lakh and if you look at the nucleotide sequences it is in billion why why did, why this difference exists because we know that these the, the, the proteins structures are very difficult to obtain so we have we have lots of limitation we have experimental limitations to the proteins so we have two techniques the major techniques which we use which we use to resolve the protein structure this is the excited histography and another is the nmr and smaller structure can be resolved by you know circular diagram or any infra uh, you know the infra based matter uh, the, you know the spectroscopical methods are there which you can use to resolve smaller structure but for biological macromolecular structures you need either crystallography or the nmr so nmr is basically you know it gives it resolves the structure in solution aqua solution so it gives multiple structures if you if you if you look at the pdb entry you will see that these structures are deposited either through nmr or through extra crystallography but if you look at the file of nmr resolved structure you can see multiple models are there so for a single proteins you will see multiple models but in case of extra crystallography you will find only single model for a single protein okay this is how n99 this was book heaven and then okay important thing is the the nomenclature of all protein structures so they call it is pdb id code it is a four letter alpha numeric code for example 3 r this is human insulin 3 ins ins stands for the insulin okay so it is not all the time that they'll uh, put uh, but this is maybe you know it's, it's maybe a by chance so 3 ins for human insulin so pdb id code is nothing but four letter alpha numeric code for all the protein structures available at the protein data bank so this is protein data bank uh you can see the 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 growth of this protein data bank till 2021 we got on around 180 180000 like structures so you can see so why this is uh, you know steep because of the modernization because of the automation of the uh crystallographic steps where like you know rogago machines and all you know the robots are being used for all crystallization because crystallization step is supposed to be the, the perplex most uh, intricate uh, step in uh, x-ray diffraction where like we need the crystal out of the uh, the protein solutions so they use different crystallizing agent so now machine now the robots are being used where you can create crystals fast so you can make different con uh, solution of different concentration you can you can you can generate your crystal at the earliest so this is why you know you can see this is typical the exponential rise in the number of structure but but as compared to the nucleotide it's very very less so nucleotide acid databases are there three dimension structure and db 1992 and db content information about experiment by nucleic acid so this is how the added tools are there you can see so this and db contain the nucleotide 
structure information. Okay, so uh, uh, let's see. Okay, so molecular modeling database is there. MMDB, it's uh, NCBI, it's hosted by NCBI. It's quite, you know, you, know uh, you can see, you can perform domain analysis over there. And lots of, you know, the tools have been incorporated with this SCN 3D, like expedited chemical graphs are there, computationally identified 3D domains, you know. Then you can use to identify similar 3D structures using su structural superimposition technique. As well as link to literature, similar sequence, chemical information. So they are, but you know, uh, of course they are uh, moving good. But uh, PDB also now incorporate lots of tools, GN 3D, and you know the JMOL is there and different uh, visualization tool at their site. So you can visualize using the JMOL, which is incorporated into the browser itself. So you can, so. Earlier, there was no vis direct visualization of the structure, only images were there, but now you can visualize all those structures, all interactions, you can have the things with this competition, but it is a vector-based system, quite fast, as compared to the JML, which is not a vector-based system. So CN3D and so on. So we have lots of softwares by which we you can use those softwares for visualizing these structures, okay? Classification scope cat are the classification secondary databases. You can see structures they have, like for example, uh, scope is given by the Mujin, Pranajar, Panaj, Chhutia, and according to this classification, all protein structures are classified into class, fold, superfamily, and family. Okay, so this is how they have classified. So class is like there are four classes are there: alpha, beta, alpha by beta, alpha plus beta. Okay. So these are the major four classes. Besides, if, if some protein, if any protein is not uh, be a part of any of these four, then it will be assigned maybe a multi-domain or maybe a membrane. So it is because you know, membrane proteins, they are very complex. So majority of the proteins, they lie, they, they are a part of, you know, they are out of these four classes, okay? So then once, yeah, once the class is identified, they will look for the fold. That is the similarity in their structure. Fold is, when we say fold, here like class is not responsible for function, but here function is important, fold. So every functional region, okay, is uh, basically a fold. So what your protein fold? It is basically the fold is nothing but the spatial arrangement of the secondary structure element. So these secondary structure element arrange themselves in such a way that they make a functionally a viable structure. So, and then we can easily see the fold. And then superfamily, homology, you know, superfamily is nothing but they, they look for the sequence similarity against the uh, other, the uh, sequence similarity against the structure whose sequence is known. So, so they take sequence from the PDB and then look the sequence similarity. So they, they make the super families and then similarly homology and close sequence similarity called the family. So that is how they make this system. Another is this, look at this, it's a root, root squab, this is the class, and this is the fold, and super family and family. Yes. And finally, you can see the protein sequence. Okay, so this is the end entry and terminal lobe of this. So this is how they are arranged. Cathy similarly stands for the class, architecture, topology, homology. It's quite, you know, they are similar, but, you know, it's given by Faringo et al. And they have classified the all structures based upon, first is class, same thing, alpha, beta, alpha, beta, few second structure elements, means those are not, those are not part of this. And the architecture, this here, like architecture is something, the orientation of the secondary structure elements, ignoring the connectivity here, they are ignoring the connectivity and then they, they look for the, the the topology. Topology means how uh, means the orientation and connectivity based upon this app. Here they ignore the connectivity, but here in topology they consider the, the connectivity okay. and then based upon the SAP fold of scan. Okay, so so then finally the homology that is sequence phase, sequence similarity phase. So uh, all those structures we can easily identify the sequence of the protein structure. And then we compare the sequence of this protein structure. And then we can see which uh, sequences are similar. And based upon that, we can say the homology. So they have 
subscription system, cat, domains, example. Okay, let's discover, discuss about the file format. So file formats are nothing but a system um, that we use to store information. Okay, so every database has some system, some way by which, you know, it is stored the information and gives output. Okay, so it means generate reports. Okay, so file formats are very important thing. And this is the way by which you can store your information. For example, if you look at the FAT file of, from GenBank, you can see there are the locals, the friends, there are the records. And this is called the header. And then this is called the feature table. Feature table means since it is a sequence record, so we know that sequence starts from the one and so suppose this is a very small sequence. So it starts with one and by 450. The length is four by 50. So it is CDS. The entire sequence is a expressed part of sequence. So you can see the translation. So this is called this features feature table. And finally, the base count, your sequence. Sequence, feature table, and this is called header. Header is something which contains the information about how the sequence is how the sequencing was performed, who has done, where the paper was published, so it contains all different kinds of information related to the sequence. But here, feature table is very important thing. Feature table tells us which part of the sequence performs what. Okay, so here, here this feature table, for if you look at the uh, chromosomal map, you look at the chromosome, you will see that the serious region is very important. Because here, like this says, coding sequence. CDS means coding sequence. So this is a coding sequence, which means it, this coding sequence translated into some product, translatory product. So this is how. And this is database cross-referenced. Database cross-referenced. That means if you click on this point, it will take you to the another data bank. And from in another data bank, you will click, you will be taken to this data bank. Okay, so this is called cross-linking of data banks where like these links are there, you click on the link, it will take you to another data bank. In another data bank, you will see again a link. You click on the link, you will be taken back to the, so these data banks are said to be cross-linked data banks. Okay, so this is cross -linked. Okay, so it's the same protein, but you can see the, the same uh, sequence, but you can see the format is different. Okay, so this is EML entry, and it was the GenBank entry. So, so you know, here like it uses different identifier record names are different. And here it, uh, it uses two letter record name, FT for feature table, feature table, keyword, description, date, accession number. This accession number is very important. Accession number is like whenever a scientist or researcher submits or deposit the nucleotide sequence to data bank, it will in this data bank, they will give you one accession number to your record, to your sequence, okay? Now, like for example, once you have got an accession number of your sequence, you can modify the sequence and you will get new version number of that accession number. Like whenever, uh, you know, if you will perform multiple modification to the sequence, you will, uh, at every time you will be given the new version number one, 0.2, 1.3, 1, like for example, 4.1, 4.2, 4.3, that So this is, the accession number is very important. It is a direct window to the sequence information. If you know the accession number, you, you just mentioned the accession number, you will be directly taken to the information. Okay. So this is uh, the EMBL and rate two, which are same information, but here like the feature header, feature table, like this is the header one, these are, you know, so, you know, the classification is there, organism is there, so it uses two letter words to identify the population. Okay, let's look at the structure of your protein, like uh, uh, Renuka was explaining you about the, the docking of li ligand with the receptor, where, like the, what this information, what information is available with the structure of the protein. So this is called the PDB file, okay? So this is the PDB file, PDBNT 3 iitr interleukin 13. So you can see that, uh, for example, uh, like uh, GenBank record, it has got a header section where, you know, in header section, you will see all like, uh, different kinds of information like 
the the name of the molecule the compound the short experimental information means and in remark section you will see the experimental details what the kind of a, you know the space group was there how much resolution was there you know so uh, what are the experimental uh, procedure how the crystal was made crystal geometry lots of you know the, the in itself so uh, lots of uh, information regarding experiments okay so it's all available in remark section in header section and similar to that uh, there is a called sequence segment called sacres is the name of record and you can see this sacres contain this the sequence information you know this this line one line two so it is 109 starts with 109 and this 44 109 and this is you know this is how uh, this is record type record number okay now it has been changed completely okay so from sacres this sacres contain this sequence of so there are two two sacres molecules you can see so it is start from this and with this okay one and two so this is record number here uh, sorry so here uh, you can see the secondary information secondary structure information what is secondary structure it is a helix it can be a sheet can be the uh, um, the uh, normal sir, sorry coil. to interrupt yes um so uh, you uh, uh, you can talk till like uh, 6:15 uh, okay how much is the time more okay so uh, okay 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 i'll try to finish at the earlier okay so uh, okay so pdb entry sequence is there these are secondary structure elements so this is a is a name first helix second so it start with a leucine 19 to glycine uh, to amine to amine 18 okay so this is helix so similarly you can see the second one starts in tryptophan 31 Sparagine thirty four. Okay, so this is how sheets are there. Similarly, this is disulfide bond. And important thing is the atomic coordinates. Okay, so atomic coordinates, atomic number, the name of the atoms, N C C N C C. Okay, so N C alpha C. Then this is carbonyl. And this carbonyl is uh, you know this C alpha is attached with this C beta C gamma. Proline. This is first residue number. Residue name. Residue number. X. Okay, so this is called x coordinate. This is called y coordinate, z coordinate. This is the occupancy, and this is the structure factor. So this is how, and you can see the faster format is again important, simplest format. This faster format is nothing but a normal sequence where the first line is comment line. Okay, so this is faster format called Lipman-Pearson format. Okay, so how do we retrieve information from databases? So we know the database searching is important. Where like you know search engines are there. So NTAG as well as JBG different search engine uh, search engines are there for. For NCBI we have NTAG called Entra to enter. Entra is search. You can search multiple databases simultaneously. What is the benefit of this? So this using search engines you can you can search multiple databases at time. You can search multiple databases simultaneously. So all databases are cross-referenced. Usage, analysis, like keywords, homology searches are there, pattern searches are there. Databases, you know, it's very important. Prediction use the database knowledge base, knowledge database. Two methods are there for searching databases. One is text base, another is sequence base. Two methods are there to search. Either you put a name, or some text that called keyword. X, Y, W, G, Fibre Canis, and another is sequenced, where you put the entire nucleotide sequence. Okay, so text-based searching, everybody has engines. You can put those keywords. For keyword search, they all accept these Boolean characters and or not. Okay, so usually not case sensitive. Limit is important. You can set the limit, and then like here, like for example, whenever you search a database, always use multiple combinations. Okay, logics and or not something. These are these represents the tables. Okay, in case of a uh, sequenced based searching, you take DNA or protein sequence as your query. So what is the problem? Given a biological sequence, either DNA or protein, identify 
it's sequence homolog in biological data so, okay you are identifying the sequence homolog homology means homology homology means which uh, any sequence said to be homologous if it shares the common ancestor okay so homology means similarity between sequences which results from a common ancestor two sequences are said to be homologous if they share a common ancestor okay so how do we identify that we use statistics to learn that so blast and fast are the tools which perform this sequence based searching and basic assumption is that sequence homology is there if two sequences are means if two sequences are homologous they they will have similar structure or similar function so this is what the assumption behind this homology based searching sequence similarity two sequences are highly similar okay but they are not means uh, similar uh, homology what does it mean means uh, if a very high level of similarity is a strong indication of homology homology is a relationship it is not like a quantitative we cannot say it is the two sequences are 70% homologous no they can two sequences can never be 70% they you cannot quantify the relationship it is a qualitative term they are either homologous or they are not homologous but similarity is a quantitative term two sequences are say 90% similar so if they are 90% similar there is a high chance that they are homologous okay, so this is the similarity in homology sequence based query you can take sequence which is preferable either dna or a protein amino acid sequence so queries like nucleotide four letter alphabet amino acids 20 letter alphabet so if you look at the complexity of the sequence two random dna sequence will share 25% identity and five and if you take protein only only 5% identity is there okay so it seems there are 20 amino acids are there only 5% and there are only four bases are there 25% okay so that is why like protein comparison matrices are much more sensitive than those so whatever uh, you know the these pam blossom all those kind of scoring matrices are available for database they are only and only for proteins not for dna okay so these protein matrices are very sensitive they are very good dna dubbings are much larger meaning more random hits that's why again more important thing so confusion using amino acid sequences very much preferable for homology searching then why use nucleotide sequence after all suppose if no rf is present then what would you do in that case you need nucleotide sequence for example est searching for specific dna drug for example est no similar proteins were found in also in that in, in that case also you need to use dna sequences so query is yes. okay so we can uh, you can take either you know we can translate so we can use dna or a protein as a query and we can search dna as well as protein data banks okay we can take either dna or protein and we can search okay so blast and fast are the tools you can put your query you can set your matrix you can done you can get your sequence you will get your results like this lines this is your query and then you can see these are the top hits this is own sequence and this is the closely we call this as orthologs orthologs are the same sequence but in different species different species so we call orthologs if same sequence in uh same genome we call it is parallel and uh, suppose like if the, it is very much you know it is uh, 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 you know the sequence similarity is there but uh, you know they are very uh, divergent we call that it's xenologs for example a bacteria gene or a viral gene present in human if a viral gene matches with a human so so it is like you know the whole this kind of called xenologs are the horizontal gene transfer and any gene transfer at the same time example 2021 if one in fact one insect is there it insect bites it's, and its genome get attached to the human and if we sequence we will see that the in the genome of that insect in the human when we sequence our genome and it, it means it is a horizontal gene transfer so orthologous sequence are of importance we use we always use orthologous sequences that means same sequence but in different different species so if this color coding is there by which you can see this is distinctly related homologs these are probable homologs and they are the hits okay the biological relevance is important it is up to you the biologist to scrutinize these elements to determine if they are significant 
Are you looking for a short region of near identical sequence or larger region of general sequence? Are the mismatches sensitive ones? Okay, so you have to decide. Biological resemblance is very important. You have to decide, biologist, because computer program will give you the results, the answers, but you have to check those answers. It's very important. Okay, so there are you know challenges of bioinformatics. Explosion of information is there, and lack of bioinformatics is there. You know, you know every day like information is like expanding, but people with skilled people are yeah. We need skill. Thank you. Thank you, Terry, everybody. So I'm open for the question if, if there is any. Thank you. Prashant? Yes? Prashant? Admin Prashant? Anuka? So is there any question? Prashant? Hello? Prashant? Yes, anybody has any questions? Anybody has any question? Ajinder, yeah, okay. Tell me. Hello. Yes. Can you can you hear me, sir? Sorry? Yeah, yeah, I am hearing you properly. You? Don't... Yes, uh... ask your first question. Database uh, when we are uh, searching for some whole genome sequences or gene, uh, uh, there is uh, there is feature table. Sometimes it shows coverage hundred x, fifty x, or whatever two hundred x. So what? What? So whole? You know the for whole genome you search a different, and for this uh, you can search for NCBI nucleotide code. And what you are saying? What you are getting? Your voice was not. Uh, there ah, is something what, what? Uh, coverage. What? No, for that is uh, you know uh, that is NGS data. You're talking about the NGS data. Oh, I haven't covered the NGS data. Covering you know the coverage is very important. What is the uh, you know coverage is nothing but uh, uh, you take a sequence and you multiple like four x hundred x. We use that term. 2x, 4x, 10x coverage. That means uh, one, they are assuming that that particular piece of uh, you know sequence will pass 10 times. That is called 10x coverage. 100 times means 100, 100x coverage. So 10x coverage is generally been taken. So based upon that, so what they do is they sequence. They keep on sequencing. They keep on sequencing to achieve the 10x coverage. Okay. I hope okay, it is. Sir, okay. Thank okay. you, sir. Yeah. So coverage is nothing but it is the number of a time a sequence passes cross or, or the, it, that particular sequence get you will get that sequence. So 10x means 10 times. So you sequence four hours, eight hours to get 10x coverage. So this is the so the coverage aspect. Yes. Any more question? Anything that. Uh, I hope uh, that is clear. The bioinformatics, the data bank. Prashant? Uh, who is the next speaker? So, I don't know.
Hello. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Dr. Uh, Solanki, uh, for uh, giving a wonderful talk and uh, elaborating on different aspects with respect to computational tools and all. And uh, yeah, I think uh, we give a um, uh, yeah. So uh, I thank think you. we can just uh, thank you very much. Sir. No, no, thank you, thank you, Renuka. I was uh, I finished uh, with eight uh, minutes and I was waiting. <laughs> I was calling Prashant, so um, he might be on uh, another way. Yeah, so, he still held up with some other task, so I need to uh, yeah take over. So it okay, was, uh, thank you, thank you. Okay. okay, so thank you, so participants. If anybody is having any questions and want to interact, please you can. You are always welcome to interact and. Uh, um, you can also contact uh, through email and uh, uh, also uh, have a discussion if uh, anything you need any support or help and that um, uh, computationally uh, we have a very good expert uh, MBA as well. Yeah, okay, yeah, I'm available so I have shared my email also with you. So, in case of any query, anything, you can always reach to me. You can write a mail to me, you can reach me. Any questions? Any more questions? Anybody? Okay, then. Thank you. Thank you, Renuga. So, may I take your leave? Yes, sir. Please. Thank you. Okay. So, I'm uh, stopping. Now, yeah. I have stopped. Now, you can uh, begin presentation next presentation you can you can continue your presentation no problem yeah thank you sir actually we have to go for the hands on session so that was the uh, one ah, you can continue that. okay okay uh, yes ma'am hello uh, in, uh i think uh, everyone got the hands on uh, file right you can please download and uh, uh, also try to uh, do or uh, do we need to give uh, continue this um, demo before you start the hands on session yes ma'am uh, it will be helpful yes um, Nancy, can uh, can you please open your uh, uh, share your screen and then you can start uh, continuing. Uh, Ma'am, do I need to start the result analysis part or 